Hello and welcome to the next one. In this one we'll be looking at the noise in multiple stage amplifiers. Any real amplifier, when given an input signal of SI for input and an input noise level of NI, will produce an output signal level of SO and an output noise level of NO. Some of that output noise will be generated by the amplifier itself. Now this is functionally identical to this amplifier here. Same input signal and noise, same output signal and noise, but in this case we've taken all of the noise introduced by the noisy amplifier and moved it to become an equivalent input noise just before a perfect noiseless amplifier. So the additional noise that this amplifier introduces is NE1, the equivalent input noise, times the gain of the amplifier. This equivalent input noise is how most amplifiers are specified. It's exactly the same idea that we saw in the op-amp noise model in a previous video. Now, consider a multiple stage amplifier which has got three of these amplification stages, each of which is represented by a perfectly noiseless amplifier of gain G1, G2 and G3, and these are power gains, and a equivalent input noise power, these are noise powers, of NE1, NE2 and NE3. And we're using powers because it's much easier to add up the different contributions of noise if they are represented in powers. We can just add up noise powers directly. We don't have to take the squares, add up the squares and then take the square roots, which we'd have to do if they were noise voltages. Then, what's the total output noise? Well, that would just be NO, the output noise, is the gain of the third stage multiplied by the input noise to the third stage. The input noise to the third stage is the equivalent input noise, NE3, plus the noise that comes out of the second stage. The noise coming out of the second stage is the gain of the second stage times the noise that goes into the second stage. And the noise going into the second stage is the equivalent input noise of the second stage plus the noise that comes out of the first stage. And the noise that comes out of the first stage is the gain of the first stage multiplied by the input noise to the first stage, which is the equivalent input noise to the first stage plus the input noise to the system. And if you just do a little bit of algebraic manipulation on that, you end up with this expression here. A bit more algebraic manipulation, and we can get to this expression. G1, G2, G3 times the input noise plus the equivalent input noise to the first stage plus the equivalent input noise to the second stage divided by the gain of the first stage plus the equivalent input noise to the third stage divided by the gain of the first two stages taken together. And that turns out to be quite an interesting way to write it. Because if we consider the amplifier like this, we could note that this is what we would expect if we had an amplifier of gain G1 times G2 times G3, which had an equivalent input noise of this. NE1 plus NE2 over G1 plus NE3 over G1, G3. It's just this. That's the amplified up input noise. That's the total gain of the three stages of the amplifier taken together. And then whatever is in here must be the equivalent input noise of this multi-stage amplifier. It's just this.
And that gives us a simple way to derive the equivalent input noise of a multiple stage amplifier. This immediately suggests a very important result. Provided G1 is big enough, then the effect of the second and third and any subsequent stages is negligible. Almost all of the noise is going to come from the equivalent input noise of the very first stage. And that's why so much care and attention is placed on minimising the noise introduced by the first stage of amplification in any sensitive receiver. It's why, in some radio astronomy applications, the very first amplification stage is cooled by liquid nitrogen in order to try and make it as low noise as possible, whereas second and subsequent stages of amplification, they don't bother to cool it because it really doesn't have that much of an effect on the overall noise added to the system. This equation is sometimes known as the Fries formula, and we can do a simple example of it like this. Supposing we have a three-stage amplifier. First stage and second stage both have a voltage gain of 30, and both have RMS added input equivalent noise of 10 millivolts RMS. The third stage has a voltage gain of 1, so it doesn't amplify at all, but it introduces a much larger noise of 50 millivolts. Well, if we put these numbers into the formula, then, bearing in mind that this is a voltage gain, and the formula deals with powers and equivalent input powers, then we'd have to say that the RMS noise, 10 millivolts, corresponds to a noise power of 10 millivolts squared, and similarly 50 millivolts RMS of noise, 50 millivolts squared of noise power, divide by the gain of the first stage, well the voltage gain is 30, so the power gain is 30 squared, and similarly G1 times G2 would be 30 squared times 30 squared, which is 900 squared. Put in these values and we see that the only significant contribution to the total noise is this first term, the equivalent input noise from the first amplifier. The second amplifier has the same RMS noise, but it's only introducing around one thousandth as much noise as the first stage. The third stage introduces, in theory, five times as much noise, but is over four orders of magnitude lower in terms of the noise power than the first stage. Take the square root of the final value and 10.006 millivolts is the RMS equivalent input noise for this whole amplifier chain, which is really not significantly different from just the noise introduced by the first stage. That's all I wanted to say this time. Next time we'll look at two other ways in which amplifiers are often specified, starting with the noise temperature.